In this video, I show you how to install this Manda server on a Linux system. The Zmanda server is the core software that lets you run backups across all your IT systems. It consists of two components, the Zmanda Management Console and the Backup Server. The Zmanda Management Console, or ZMC for short, is a web-based management interface that provides a centralized point of control for all your backup and recovery operations. And the Backup Server provides the backup and recovery services. In this video, we'll install both on the same system. However, you can also install them in separate systems and even connect multiple backup servers to a single Zamanda management console. This allows you to create more sophisticated cluster architectures and manage them all from a single place. We can install Zamanda on a Linux system in three steps. Step one, prepare the Linux system where Zamanda will be hosted. Step two, install the Zamanda server. And step three is to upload the trial license and configure the server. And the process I'm outlining is fully documented on Docs. Amanda. Step one, let's prepare the Linux system that will host the Zamanda server software. I'm using AWS to bring up a Linux machine, but you can skip this part if you already have a Linux system ready to go. Just make sure that the Linux distribution and the release version is supported by Zamanda as specified in zamanda.com slash compatibility hyphen matrix. Now, to boot up a VM, let's log into AWS Management Console, go to Services, Compute, EC2, and this is what I'd want to click on Launch Instance. Over here, let's name it Zamanda Backup Server. And in the OS, I'm going to select Ubuntu, and it's about at 22.04 LTS. The way I know it's supported by Zamanda is if I go to Compatible Matrix and scroll down, a man enterprise backup server, Ubuntu 22.04 is supported for the backup server configuration. And we move down. Instance types, let me select a 2 GB instance. However, for production environments, we would recommend Zamanda to have at least 4 GBs of RAM and enough local storage to accommodate a full backup. Now, this is important because if a target ever goes offline, your backups are stored on the local server. Now, for the key pair login, we recommend signing in with the private key. However, in great care to ensure your private key is kept safe because anyone with access to your private key can log into the server or go logging into the Zamanda backup server. So I'm going to select an existing keypad I've already created and moving down to network configurations. Now I'm going to select the VPC where all my production systems are going to be hosted and subnet is going to be selected by default. Now for the networking section, I'll allow SSH from anywhere across the internet. If however you have a static IP address range from which you'll be accessing the Zamanda services, I would advise you to allow traffic only from these IP address ranges. Additionally, we need five additional ports to have access. That's port number 8002, 8008, 10080, 10081, and the normal range is between 800 to 844 incoming TCP communication. Let me add those right here. 8002, 8008, 10080, 10081, and the port range is from 800 to 840. Perfect. I'm happy with the other details and I'm ready to boot the server by clicking on Launch Instance. I'll give it a few seconds and my instance ID is generated. Let me click on it for more details. And there we have a private IP address aside and a public IP address aside. The next thing we'll do is update the Linux system to prepare it for the Zamanda installation. Now open the SSH terminal of your choice. I'm going to be using mobile external. SSH, IP address. I know the default is Ubuntu. And private key is created here. Login is successful. I'll keep these screens side by side because we'll be referencing this document throughout the station process. And currently we are at Step one of preparing the Linux system for Zaman installation. So since we're running Debian, we'll follow the Debian instructions. However, if you're using an RPM based system, please follow the RPM instructions. So the first thing is update Linux. Now we'll move over to installing some of the dependencies like Soundbot that helps with CIFS backups and launch storage for tape mounting and configurations. 
copy these commands from the installation files here and click on enter. Now, given the dependencies are completed, we can proceed to the next step, which is checking if SLinux is enabled. Now, depending on your Linux distribution, SLinux may come pre-enabled. If your system has SLinux enabled and decide to enforcing state, please change it to the permissive mode. You can check the status of SLinux by entering the command get enforce on your command line. And in this situation, we are noticing that SLinux is not configured. So we can skip this step. But however, if SLinux is set to enforcing in your status, please copy the command and run this in the Linux command line. Now, we are done with the dependence installation and the host system preparation. Now we move on to step two, which is installing the Zamanda software. For that, visit zamanda.com slash free trial and enter your basic details. And on clicking submit, you will have two emails in your inbox. The first will be the welcome email welcoming you to Zamanda, and the second will be the login details for Zamanda's customer portal, network.zamanda.com. These login details for network.zamanda.com are needed to download your license and the Zamanda software. So let's log into network.zamanda.com with the login details. And let's click on the downloads tab from the left menu and then navigate to the backup server section. Over here, I'll select the Linux system that we have running, which is Ubuntu 22.04. And on doing so, the two links in the right have become active. Now, ZMC is the Zamanda management console that provides a center point of control for all your backup and recovery operations. And the second one, the backup server, provides the core backup and recovery services to the clients. You need both these binaries. And for this tutorial, I'm installing the ZMC on the same system as the backup server. However, a single ZMC can be configured with multiple backup servers on different systems to form a very distributed architecture for scaling workloads. Now, click on the binaries to download the files and then go to your downloads folder to copy the CDN links. Now, SSH into your Linux system. We use a wget command to download the Zamanda installation binaries to your Linux system. The command looks like this. We type wget followed by the links. Now, WKIP will download the binaries to the current directory, which over here is the home folder. The next step is to make these executables. So that is chmod plus x. We need to run this on sudo. Both the Zamanda files, let me validate this. Both the files have the executable permissions, which is great. And let's put the next step. We then run them individually. We run the backup server first, then followed by ZMC. So it's sudo dot slash Zamanda backup server dot run. Now Zamanda's one click installs are fully automated and all you need to do is accept the license term and wait for the installation to complete. Two minutes in and the backup server has completed installation and now we do the same procedure for ZMC. That's sudo dot slash Zamanda ZMC dot run. Now, while this installs in the background, do know that ZMC works on top of the backup server and thus ZMC is installed second in this configuration. Now, it looks like ZMC has finished installing and now let's verify the setup. And to do that, we run the command setup hyphen AEE to verify that all the backup server packages are installed and all the units are running. And in this case, we can see four on four and 10 on 10 are successfully working. And we do the same procedure for ZMC by running setup iPhone ZMC. And as you can see, four on four and 12 on 12 packages are running correctly. Perfect. Now let's set the password that you will use to log into the Zamanda's web-based management console. And to do that, we run this command and we enter the username I'm going to use admin as the username and I'm going to enter my password. And with this, a secure password is configured. Perfect. The next to configure is the ports. Now the thing is, the manager requires a few specific ports to be open. And these are mentioned over here. Each of these have a specific purpose. 10,080 allow the backup data to flow from the clients 
to the server. 10,081 to allow the rest of the data to flow from the server to the client. 8,002 is to communicate between the backup server. 8,008 is the management concern can be accessed by users. And these port ranges are the default port ranges for HTTP, HTTPS communication, etc. Now, if your firewall is configured, you have to run these commands to allow them to be passed through the firewall. And given in this instance, we don't have a UFW firewall configured, we can skip this step. All right. Now, let's see the validity of the Zamanda certificates. To do that, we'll be running the following command. And as you can see over here in this particular configuration, our certificates are expired because it expired on Feb 2nd. And today at the date of filming, it is April 15th. Thus, to rebuild the certificates, you have to download the script and execute it. And to do that, let me click on this. Let me copy the CDN link and run it using wget. And just like before, I'll make this executable with some mod. Plus X, Zamanda certificate. And then simply run sudo dot slash Zamanda certificate. Give it a few minutes to install the certificate. Now with this, we are ready to log into our ZMC. Now open the browser and enter the IP address of your machine. I can enter the private IP address because I'm on the VPN and follow that by the port number, which is 8008. Great, you can see the management console right here. For the username and password, use the same as that you configured a few steps prior. In that case, it was admin and let me enter my password. And with this, we have logged in to the Zamanda Management Console. Now the first thing that we do is install the license and activate the entire ZMC configuration. And to do that, let's go back to the command line and find the MAC address of the system. So I type IP address and the MAC address is this character set right here and download the license. Let me go back to home. And as you can see, I have my license tab right here. Click on the download icon and enter the MAC address of the system, followed by the server name, which is purely for your reference. Let me install it as Mumbai zone. Click on submit. And we have the license file that downloaded. Let me go back to ZMC, click on settings, licenses, and upload the license file. Now do ensure that the license file is named as Amanda underscore license. If not, please rename it to this file name. Select the file and click on open. Click on upload. And the license is successfully validated. And now configure your backup server by go to settings, clusters, click on add server, and server name and server region of your references and server IP and port number are the ones on which the backup server is running. So for server name, let me name it as Mumbai server, followed by region as IND. Server IP address, we do know it runs in the same machine as the ZMC console here. That's 10.0.0.13. And the port number is 8002. I clicked on save. And with this, the backup server is created. All right, you're ready to start exploring ZMC and configuring your backups. And welcome to the Zamanda family.